Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. We have had the Paschal celebrations. We've got back to somewhat of a normal routine now with today's services. Have we changed? Has Pascha made an impact in our hearts? Did we make a decisive change in our lives? We experienced the great grace that was present in the services last week because indeed it was present. I experienced it. I'm sure many of you experienced it as well. It's hard not to feel the palpable, palpable grace that was here. We look at the lives of these saints and we see decisiveness. In fact, St. Thomas in the services is called decisive. This idea of being down in Thomas is more of a Latin construct and not more of an Orthodox construct. Yes, he did have doubt, but that is not emphasized. You have to remember, the other disciples had doubt as well. They did not believe when the women came and told them. They had to verify it for themselves as well, because this was a thing beyond reason to them, thing way beyond the normal human faculties of belief. So Thomas, of course, when he has this opportunity and finally is there when the doors are shut, the Lord comes in, the Lord challenges his unbelief, Tells him to touch it, and when Thomas sees those wounds, he says, My Lord and my God. Now, Thomas doesn't say much to us in the Holy Gospels, but what he does say is rather decisive. Remember with Lazarus, when Lazarus had died, Come, let us go that we may die with him. He was bold. He made a decision. He's also bold here. He makes a great proclamation, which we have not seen any of the disciples make yet at this point. But Thomas in making this decision, goes forth into the world to proclaim the gospel. No more fear. As you know the great story, he goes to India and preaches the gospel there. The great peril of his own life was he took great chances there by giving away all the king's goods to the poor that ended up being to his glory when the king's brother dies and sees the mansions that Thomas had built in heaven for the king. You may remember that story. He wanted those mansions, and the king himself desired to follow the ways of Thomas. But today we also celebrate St. George, another decisive man. When he saw the Christians being persecuted, he goes before Diocletian and proclaims the gospel. And he goes through various and sundry tortures, as we may remember, countless tortures. And at one time, the king puts nail-studded boots on his feet. And anyone, most of us normal people, would want to back away from this and turn away at least have a chance to turn away and have some comfort. But George hears the voice. Run, George. Run to the object of your desire. And George runs with those boots on, with great decisiveness, without fear, with great faith, running to Christ, the object of his desire. Today in the Synox Siren, we also celebrate the new martyr, George of Cyprus. George was a young man who, implying his trade, often visited the house of a young Muslim woman, and the Muslims took an opportunity to say here that he was desiring to become a Muslim and marry this woman. Well, of course, this could be nothing farther from the truth, and in their typical fashion, these stories, they bring him forth and they offer him great rewards if he will renounce Christ and turn to Islam, to the false prophet Muhammad. They offer him tortures, if not terrible tortures, and finally after they've beaten him and beaten him and beaten him, they take him into the middle of the area of the mosque on a Friday, their day of worship. All of these men are holding pistols, and they say, okay, George, now is the time to accept Christ, or to renounce Christ, to accept Muhammad. And George simply says, Lord Jesus Christ, receive my spirit and make me worthy of thy kingdom. At that point, they unload their weapons in him and begin to stab his bodily, body terribly. At that moment, the waves of the ocean are raised up, driving the Muslims from their mosque. The blood is wiped from George, and a pillar of fire appears over his relics for three days. Great miracles take place. Why? Because George was decisive in that desire to follow the risen Lord. The Anastasios of Sinai recounts a wonderful story of a man who was a prisoner at the time of the Emperor Maurice. A 
And this prisoner was a, was a criminal, a robber, soon to be a prisoner. And he, despite the threats, despite everything that was done, continued his terrible treachery around the area of Constantinople. The Emperor Maurice decides to send him a cross, he sends him a, a beautiful cross, and promises him, I will not punish you if you repent. This criminal took the opportunity and came to see the emperor and fell at his feet. And shortly after this, the criminal falls ill on his deathbed. And on his deathbed, the people hear him praying, Lord, as you accepted the thief on the cross in that moment of repentance, Lord, as you accepted those who came at the eleventh hour, on and on and on through the scriptures with tears, weeping, filling up a handkerchief that he had with tears. At this point, the demons begin to appear to this man pointing out all of his grievous crimes, this foreshadowing of the toll houses, they come and show him his deeds throughout life. And of course he admits to all of it and repents and repents and repents, calling upon God's mercy. The angels that are staring nearby, which are the guardian angels of this criminal, say, what do we have to offer for this man? He had no good deeds until now, countless terrible deeds. One of the angels looks at that kerchief with the tears. And on the scales on the one side where the demons had put all of this man's sins, of course it was weighted heavily to that side. But the angels put the tear-filled handkerchief on one side, and instantly all the bad deeds are dispersed and cast into the air. At that point the angels cry out, the holy angels cry out, the master's love for man won out. And this man is taken to paradise. Why? Because in a single moment, when the time was ripe, when it was time for this man to come to Christ, he repented with great decisiveness, not turning back. Now we can't really fault Thomas, because when the women go to the tomb, nobody believes them either. You have to remember this time, the witness of young men and women was not accepted because this was a very violent time. And people were subject to great coercion. We already see that the soldiers had been paid off by the Jews to say that Christ had been stolen away by his disciples. They already feared and they were soldiers. But they did not believe them. So what happens is John and Peter run to the tomb. Now you notice, you remember the story, John arrives there first, but he does not go in. It was because, not because he was not bold, it was not because he, did, he lacked faith, but John was a young man. In this time period, his witness would not have been accepted. Peter, being the older man, went in first. Peter's decision, Peter's example was accepted because Peter saw it and bore witness. Nothing different than what Thomas is doing. So Thomas shouldn't be bashed by us for doubting. We all have our doubts. The proof is in our doubts is in bright week when we fall away from our discipline of spiritual life. How many of us turned away from our prayer rules? How many of us turned away from our scripture readings? How many of us indulged in gluttony? How many of us failed to come to church? And the vigil of Thomas, so there's about five here. But the doors were shut. We should have been here. Christ, if at all possible. Because we have to have that decision now, because we have seen the gospel, we have seen the good news that Christ is risen from the tomb, and that death has been trampled down. And if the great martyr George can run to the object of his desire, if the new martyr George can confess Christ knowing that he is about to be shot, and pray that he will be received, if this robber can come to the Emperor Maurice and repent strongly on his deathbed, if Thomas can say, my Lord and my God, and leave everything that he knew and go to the ends of the earth, certainly we who have seen the fullness of the resurrection have experienced Pentecost, which Thomas had not yet experienced, may run to the ends of the earth proclaiming the gospel, might change our ways of life, and from this point on, fervently cry out, my Lord and my God, and run to the object of our desire, who is the risen Lord. 
Amen. Amen.